Welcome back friends! Welcome to my first YouTube video. First off, I want you to hit that subscribe button. After that, if you want to see how I made this moist, juicy, delicious, sweet, savory, and salty ham. You guys, this is one of the best ham recipes on YouTube. I'll just look at that. And it's so easy to make. If you want to see how I make it, keep watching. Hey friends, let's get started. I'm starting with a shank portion bone and ham from Appleton Farms. Now, you can pick this up at pretty much any grocery store you go to. However, the ham that I picked up was not spiral sliced. Most hams that you're going to pick up are going to be already sliced for you. Mine was not. As you can see, I spent about $18.50 on this ham. But for that amount of money, this is enough to feed several people for several days. I'm going to remove the packaging on the ham and the first thing you do is there is a cover on the bone. You want to take that off. You don't need to bake your ham with that in. So just go ahead, take that off and you can discard it as well as the packaging. Make sure your counters are impeccably clean once you're working with meat on them. As you can see, this ham still has the skin and the fat on. That's okay, that's what we want. That fat is going to give its flavor and that skin is going to keep the ham from drying out. Leave it on. Now, as I stated before, my ham is not sliced. So I'm going to go through and make thick slices in here. We're gonna make these for several reasons. One is going to ensure that our ham cooks evenly and quickly. Second is going to make it a little bit easier once we're ready to serve the ham because we won't have to carve this big portion of meat. Third, and probably most important, this is going to allow the glaze that we make to seep down in those slices. You are going to be getting a little bit of heaven in every bite and that is what we want. Notice that I'm starting in the center of the ham and going down on both sides. This is going to make slicing the ham so much easier for you. And look and see that our ham is all sliced from the front to the back. This is what we want, guys. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're not going to season it. I know you're like, wait, what? Because I love to season things. We are going to start off with baking this ham first. I know, just, just bear with me. We are going to put this in a dish. This is like a casserole dish. This is actually from the Pioneer Woman. I got this dish at Walmart and it is just excellent. I really like it. So we are going to first add three tablespoons. That's your bigger spoon. We're gonna add three tablespoons of water. We're also gonna add two tablespoons of butter. If you're holding a stick of butter, each one of those lines is going to mark where the tablespoon is. We need two of those squares to put in our pan. I'm gonna put a pat of butter on each side, and then we are going to put our ham in the pan and get it ready for baking. Now, watch how I place the ham in the pan. You don't wanna lay it on its side. You want to lay the cut side down. You want all of those cuts and things that you've made to be kind of towards the top. So the bone that we uncover, we want that on the plate. This is also an excellent time to go through and finish cutting any slices that you may not have had time to make. Okay guys, so at this point your oven should be on 350. Let your ham sit for a while while you turn your oven on. If you need to preheat it, make sure your oven is warm when you put it in. If your rack is not in the proper position, move your rack down just like I did so your ham is able to fit in your oven and not be really close to the top. My oven is already preheated to 350 and I'm going to set my timer for 30 minutes. 
Okay, so I know the ham has a starring role, but let's talk about this brown sugar glaze. This is going to make you feel like a real chef. You want to start with one stick of unsalted butter. Yes, I said unsalted butter because your ham is naturally salty. Then you're going to also use the ingredients shown here to make a fabulous glaze that is going to have everyone at the table licking their fingers trust me i know from experience let me go through one by one you're going to start with some light brown sugar dark brown sugar works as well but this is what i had and you need two cups you need three-fourths of a cup of honey you're going to need one tablespoon remember that is the big measurement of vanilla you're also going to need one tablespoon of cinnamon. You need a half of teaspoon, which is a smaller one, of allspice, and also a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Now let's get this glaze going, you guys. It may be just me, but there is nothing more beautiful than the sight of melting butter. Just look at that. Isn't she gorgeous? So we're going to turn that on. We're going to go ahead and start adding our honey. Remember, I'm adding three-fourths of a cup. And when it comes to the brown sugar, I wanted to show you all, you can use brown sugar. Chances are, if you don't cook a lot, your brown sugar, if you have it in your pantry, it's probably rock hard and that's fine. I purposely <laughs> left the sack open so my brown sugar would get hard to show you guys. Even hard brown sugar makes an amazing sauce. You see those hard clumps? Just kind of turn them in that warm butter. That's gonna melt that brown sugar. That's no problem. You're still gonna get an amazing glaze from it. And if you can't quite measure how much your clumps are, just try to fit them in the uh, cup measurement. Remember, you need two cups. And this is not an exact recipe. You can make mistakes. It's very forgiving. And trust me, the outcome is going to be amazing. Let's pour in our vanilla and let's also put in our seasonings. Remember, we're going to be using a tablespoon of cinnamon, a half of a teaspoon of allspice, and a half of a teaspoon of nutmeg. Once this reaches a boil, we're just going to stir it up very, very, very good. If you have a whisk, this would be the perfect opportunity to use it. If not, I'm using a spoon. A spoon works great. Just keep stirring. And the most important part, take it off that heat and set it to the side. Please excuse my stove. I was in the middle of cleaning my stove as I was filming. So this is the sauce, you guys. We pulled it off the stove. Look how dark and rich and amazing it looks. I think I could put a straw in the pot and just suck it down right now, but I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to use it on the ham. Okay, so this is our ham after it came out the oven for 30 minutes. You see, it's finally kind of getting some color. It's starting to look like ham. So I'm going to take the glaze starting at the top, and I'm just going to let it drizzle down. Now this is why we make those slices in here. This is why we place it in the pan like here. It's like a volcano erupting, if that makes sense. It starts at the top and then it drizzles down on all the sides and what you are going to be left with is just an amazing meal. At this point, your ham may have already started to produce some juice in there. That's that water and those are the natural juices from the ham. You can scoop a few of the juices, like a little bit of the juices and drizzle it over the ham or put it in your uh, brown sugar glaze as well. Look at that beauty. Okay guys, we're going back in the oven at 350 for another 30 minutes. This pretty lady just came out the oven. Isn't she gorgeous? She is beautiful. We need to find a name for her. She's just beautiful and she loves to show off for you guys too. So she is just sitting in the pan minding her business, but she says she's kind of cold and she wants another coat on. So we're going to baste her again with this beautiful brown sugar glaze. Now I'm just taking a tablespoon and some of those juices that have come out of the pan, I'm just putting right back on top of her, keeping her nice and wet and moisturized to make sure she stays nice and juicy for us. So our glaze in the pot, you would have sat to the side. We're going to get it and we're going to scoop some more right on. If your glaze starts thickening up because you know it's not on the heat, so it may thicken up, take some of your warm ham juice just maybe two or three tablespoons, put it in the pot and stir it. 
that is going to loosen it up since it is a liquid but also it is a warm liquid so it's going to really loosen that glaze right up for you and it will be just like you took it off the stove now we're going to go in for a second basing and you see what i do i may put it on the ham but i will also go through and kind of stick my spoon in some of those slices just to make sure all of that glaze is getting good in there oh my goodness you guys this is making me so hungry and I have some more in the fridge so I think I'm about to eat a little bit more of this once I get done doing this video. Just look at that beautiful glaze just sliding down. You guys, your guests are going to think that you spent hours in the kitchen doing this. They have no idea how long it really took and how easy it really is. So we're gonna go ahead, we are going to uh, baste it the second time and we are going to now stick it in the oven at 450 degrees for eight minutes. We just want to um, really caramelize that glaze this time just to make sure it's perfect. Look at here you guys, she is fresh out the oven and she is beautiful. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Don't forget to hit a like on your way out and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I have tons of videos coming, all easy, all perfect for the beginning to moderate cook and those wanting to cook. See you in the next video.